All right, hello, this is Jeff Scott of Black Hawk Technical College. Once again, I have been trying to come up with the new and improved code for version 3 of the calculator, and once again, it appears as though, oops, once again, it appears as though it is not uh, coming up for me, and I, again, don't know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually change this code in front of you here that you see. So taking it from the top, From the very top. Okay, we've got our comments on the top, etc. So, um, <clears throat> wrote myself some notes here, just in case this were to have happened, and it did. Okay, so. We have our label variable that we talked about in class. We've got our Boolean variable to indicate whether the user is typing or not. We've got our operand stack, which is going to hold our doubles. All right. We've got our append digit routine right here, which again is going to be called anytime any of the digits 0 through 9 are pressed. And as you can see, when I rest the cursor over it, that's exactly what gets highlighted. All right. So we come in there and we grab whatever the digit was, okay, from title. So whatever is in here, we want to grab that, and that becomes our current digit. Again, we could put the print line in here. I'm going to leave it off, but we could uncomment that if we wanted to. Then we determine whether or not this is the first digit somebody has typed in there, or is it a successive digit? In other words, are there more than one? If the user is already typing a number, that means this is true. So then we just want to append that digit onto our display text. Otherwise, we're starting to type a new number. So that new number goes in there, and then is user typing becomes true. And again, if you want, you can uncomment this. You can uncomment that to see exactly what's going on. As mentioned, since, since this is basically in charge of 10 different buttons that we have on our interface, we need to have a parameter, that parameter being the sender UI button, to know which button exactly it is we clicked. So that stuff isn't new. All right, then we've got enter in here. And as mentioned, this is the routine called when the user selects the enter key, which is this pointy thing right here. So again, if I take my cursor and place it over it, you can see what's highlighted. Okay? Let's move this up a little bit. I'm great at moving it down. I'm not as good as moving it up. So there you can see it highlighted. Okay, so what are we doing in there? Well, if the users hit the enter key, they're definitely done typing their number. So we're setting is user typing number to false. Then what we want to do is we want to grab whatever is in there, that current value, and we want to throw it into our operand stack, which are doubles. In order to do that, we have to come in here and create a computed property. We talked about this in class yesterday. All right, which is going to grab new value, which is that kind of magic value that exists inside of Swift and set that to this. Set is user typing equal to false and we'll return whatever was in there converted or unwrapped and then unwrapped again into a double so we can put it inside of our um, stack. And I left that print line uncommented so you can see exactly what's happening. All right, that got us down to here. And again, for some reason, when I try to put this stuff in there, it's just not showing. So I'm going to manually put it in. So I'm going to manually change all this stuff right in front of your eyes right here. All right, so if it's a plus, well, let's look at it from the top. Operation is going to be, again, what? Plus, minus, or plus, or minus, or times, or divide, or square root. So one of those, one, two, three, four, five, six different operators. All right? So we let 
whatever they just pressed or whatever the title is in there become the operation. If they were typing a number, they're done. So we're going to hit enter for them <clears throat> if they haven't done so. And then if it's a plus, well, let's talk about the stuff we want to change here. <clears throat> and I'm going to get error messages until I go and add some more stuff here, but that's okay. That's fine. I said I'm going to get a bunch of errors here, and it's okay. All right. So what I want is in my curly braces, I'm going to say dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one, and end my curly. Again, I'll still have errors, and that's okay. For my minus. Let's just grab this because we're basically going to do this several times. This, for the minus, we're going to subtract what's in argument 1 from what's in argument 0. All right. I'm going to put a line between each one of these so you can at least hopefully see what's going on. Multiply is with a multiplication symbol. Finally, divide. We'll have it in there with a divide symbol, and that will be 1 divided by 0. So we're cleaning it up. All right. If it's plus minus, oh, and for each one of these we have to call perform, which we haven't created yet, but we will in just a second. Finally, we have our display, or our, sorry, our square root. So that should have, should have cleaned everything up here. <coughs> that, of course couple things about perform wrong. And that will be a curly. Okay, so that pretty much you can see hopefully just how much we have cleaned this code up, which is quite a bit. All right, this reads much simpler now. It looks much nicer now, etc. Now, once we've done this, we, we have to write the two versions that we have of our perform operation. There is no perform in here right now, so we're going to create it. Again, it will take two doubles, and it will return a double. At least one form of this function will. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that our operand stack dot count is greater than or equal to two. So, whoa, hello. This will handle everything. Come on. This will handle everything except for, well, this will handle addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division.
And then we have to override this, and the reason that we have to override perform is we have to uh, set it up for the plus minus and for the uh, square root. Okay, so this will expect only a single double, and it will return a single double. Steal some of this. I'll just retype it. For some reason, the, this isn't working all that great this morning, so move this up. If All right, so again, one more time in English now. Let's see, what have I done wrong here? Form, operation, double, double. Expected comma operator. <clears throat> Fuck. Form, operation, comma, double. Huh. And it doesn't like that either. Expected something in the params. Operate stack. Dot count greater than equal to one. Funk. Perform operation. Dum dum dum. Ah. How about that? That yeah, fixes it. So, what I'm saying is, if it's addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. Call perform, but call the perform that passes two different parameters. So call this one. And as long as we've got two or more parameters, all right, basically set up the operation, which will redo the remove last. So in other words, here, it'll add, subtract, multiply, and divide. All right? And... If it's one of the other ones here, just go in and call the one with one parameter. So just do a remove last. So now I'm going to do a file, and I'm going to do a save, and I'm going to try to run it. You know my luck when I try to run these things early in the morning. Hopefully we'll get this done running, and it'll look the way it did when I showed it to you in class yesterday. Again, there are still some issues with the way that it's currently written. It could definitely be improved. I'm going to give this a second and see if it's going to come up by itself here this morning. But I'm not holding out a heck of a lot of hope. Unable to run App and Simulator. Well, it came up like that, just like that. Because I now have, oh boy, I now have the right code, and I think it's unable to run it because the simulator is still up. So there we go. Let's try that. I'm going to try to do the same, oh brother, I'm going to try to do the same kinds of stuff that I did in class yesterday. Now why wouldn't this run? So let's do another save. And if it refuses to run in the simulator, I don't know exactly what to do to show you this. 
don't want to waste my time anymore. Oh, got it. Yeah, I'm not sure why this isn't running. I've not had that error before. Unable to run app in simulator. An error was encountered when running. Domain equals, etc. But the good news is I have been invited to join the wireless connection here at Blackhawk, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save and I'm going to totally close the project. Uh, you can see maybe that was a problem that somehow this, there was another version of the simulator still running. I don't know. But I'm going to try to start it up again. And we'll try to run it again. You can see it's got my changes that I just made. Doggone it. According to this, there's no the simulator is not running. I'm going to try one last thing and then I'm going to give up. I'm quitting Xcode. And I'm going to start it up all over again. Because the only other thing to do is to do a total reboot of the system. And I'm not going to do a reboot. If I do a reboot, that's fine. But um, then I lose my connection with um, Camtasia. Well, you can see I'm still getting it. <clears throat> I'm going to come into, on the other machine that I'm on here, I'm going to get into um, Google, and I'm going to run this, try to put in this error. All right, they mentioned in here that one fix for this is to come into the simulator and say iOS simulator and tell it to reset the content and settings. So I'm going to try that. 
Are you sure you want to set them? Well, it can't get any worse, so yes. <clears throat> I'm going to stop the simulator. It stopped, and I'm going to run the program again and see if I get the same error message. I did. Doggone it. Leave that up for a minute, but you now see the other code that's in here, and I'm going to have to work on this between now and the time we come back from break to make sure that I can fix whatever this error is. So as you can see, I continue to get the error message. Isn't helping me any, isn't helping you any to sit there and watch this. So I'm going to stop. You've gotten the explanation now for part four. I will save this and quit the simulator. Save. Quit Xcode. And I'm going to uh, stop right now. And you will have the four parts semi-mangled as they are.